Hello friends, welcome back to Huawei's. Welcome to the discussion of prelims test 2 and this is part 2 of the second test. In the first part we have discussed from question number 1 to 25. Now let's quickly begin with the discussion. But before that a small information. All the updates with regarding to the videos will be available in our telegram channel. This is the telegram channel. If you just type Huawei AS, you can go and join it directly in the telegram or else we will leave the we will leave the link in the description. You can even use that to join. Let's quickly begin. Let's see the question. 26th question. The 26th question is on the article 324. So as you all know, article 324 is nothing but the election commission. When you are prepare when you when you will write any answer on election commission, article 36 article 324 will directly come in your uh, uh, answer. So so you have to keep while preparing for prelims, you have to keep these facts in your mind. Okay, so that you will use even in your mains answer. So article 324 talks about the election commission, the superintendent's direction and control of preparation of electoral rolls for the election to the parliament and state legislature and of elections to office of president and vice president held under this constitution shall be vested in the election commission. And the role of election commission, if you see, it is to conduct elections for the Lok Sabha as well as for the state legislatures. Okay, even the state legislatures election is conducted by the election commission only for the only for the election of the local bodies the state election commission will be used and the state election commission registers political parties for the purpose of the election it grant recognition to the political parties as national and state parties and if you see all uh, the other things it even allocates the symbols to the parties so this is other thing and also the model code of conduct the mcc so this also will be taken care by the election commission only so uh, eci if you see it, it is not empowered to deregister parties. This is one of the major drawback of the election commission. It cannot deregister, only it can register. So it is not empowered to deregister parties on the ground of violating constitution or breaching undertaken given to it at the time of registration. A party can be deregistered if its registration was obtained by fraud, if it is declared illegal by the government of India or if party amends its internal constitution and notifies CCI that it can no longer be a it can no longer abide by the constitution. Only under these conditions a party can be deregistered. But otherwise the election commission does not have enough powers to deregister any political party. So this is about article 324. Now let's move on to the next question. 27th question is on Niti Aayog. So this Niti Aayog question if you see uh, this becomes important because in recent times this question was not asked. And as Niti Aayog now uh, close to you can say uh, by 2024 it will finish 10 years. So, because of all these reasons, this will become important. So, here if you see in the Niti Aayog, Prime Minister is the Chairman of Niti Aayog, National Integration Council, the Interstate Council and National Water Resource Council. Just remember this. Prime Minister is the Chairman of Niti Aayog, National Integration Council, Interstate Council and National Water Resource Council. The National Institution for Transforming India, Niti Aayog, formed by Executive Resolution of Cabinet on the 1st of January 2015. It's a non-statutory and extra constitutional body. The governing council of Niti Aayog comprises of PM as chairperson, ex officio members, vice chairman and full time members of Niti Aayog, CMs of all states, UTs, Lieutenant governor of Andaman Nicobar Islands. So these are the ex these are this is the composition of the composition of the Niti Aayog. Okay. And and if you see uh, if you see the interstate council, the interstate council so this is formed, this is a constitutional body formed under Article 263 via a presidential order. So present composition if you see, the Prime Minister is the Chairman of Interstate Council, the CM of all the states will be the members, the CM of Union Territories having Legislative Assembly will also be members, for example Delhi and Puducherry, Administrators of Union Territories not having Legislative Assembly like uh, you can say Andaman Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands and so on and also the Governor of the States under the President rule, remember these important exceptions. If there is governor's rule in any state, then the governor of that state will be participating in the interstate council. Remember this. And also the members will be, other members will be, the six cabinet ministers in the council will be nominated by the prime minister and four ministers of cabinet rank as permanent invitees. The national integration council, if you see, it's an extra constitutional body. While uh, the interstate council is a constitutional body, the national integration council is extra constitutional body. It is chaired by prime minister and the composition if you see, uh, it consists of the council members uh, who, who, in, who are the cabinet ministers, the chief minister of state, political leaders, chairman of UGC, the commissioners of SCST, a representative from the industry, business, trade and union. 
ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट नेशनल इंटीग्रेशन काउंसिल नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी एथ क्वेश्चन इट इज ऑन द फीचर्स ऑफ कैबिनेट कमिटीज सो कैबिनेट कमिटीज फीस दे आर एक्स्ट्रा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल दे आर नॉट मैंशन इन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो दैट्स वे दे आर एक्स्ट्रा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बट इफ यू सी द रूल्स ऑफ बिजनेस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट द रूल्स ऑफ बिजनेस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट दे प्रोवाइड फॉर द एस्टाब्लिशमेंट द कैबिनेट कमिटीज थो इट इज नॉट मैंशन इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट दे आर मैंशन इन रूल्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन rules of the constitution so if you see the letter of opposition the letter of opposition is a constitutional body it is mentioned in the constitution he has a cabinet rank okay so that's the thing so there are two types the standing and ad hoc for so the former of a permanent nature later is a temporary nature standing means it is permanent and ad hoc means only till that work is done it is set up by prime minister all the cabinet committees are set up by prime minister hence their composition varies from time to time the membership in, uh, varies from 3 to 8 include cabinet ministers but non cabinet ministers uh, they are not debarred from the membership they are mostly the cabinet committees are headed by the prime minister but sometimes by other cabinet ministers also the home minister and finance minister acts as chairman but in case prime minister is member of that committee he will preside over it he will preside over it so almost all the cabinet committees are headed by the prime minister but if you see there are two cabinet committees which are not headed by prime minister so those two cabinet committees are the cabinet committee on accommodation so this cabinet committee of accommodation is headed by the home minister home minister mr amit shah right and there is another cabinet committee cabinet committee on the parliamentary affairs so this cabinet committee on parliamentary affairs is headed by home headed by defense minister rajnath singh okay so these two are not headed by the prime minister so just remember this now let's move on to the 29th question So twenty ninth question is on SWIFT Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecom. So recently Russian banks were cut off from this SWIFT, so that's why it was in news. So US and EU recently have decided to partially cut off a number of Russian banks from SWIFT. SWIFT basically is a global a global communication network for the banks. So prior to this, only Iran have been removed from SWIFT. SWIFT is a Belgian cooperative society providing services with respect to the execution of financial transactions between banks worldwide. in this like so we can uh, just uh, simply think like this so we have a upi network for the banks of india to interact with one another in the same way for the banks to interact globally we have this swift network swift serves as a main messaging network via which international payments are initiated swift does not move money it operates as a middleman to verify information of transactions by providing secure financial messages services to 11000 banks in 200, 200 countries it is overseen by central bank from 11 industrial countries Canada Bank Germany Italy Japan Netherlands Sweden Switzerland UK US beside Belgium So this is about the Swift next 30th question first past the post system of elections every constituency elects one representative and winning candidate from a constituency need not secure majority of votes so what does this mean so in indian parliamentary system in indian elections we follow this first past the post system what is this first past the post system so that means let's say uh, a, a person a person x is contesting in a constituency so for this person to win the election he need not get 50% of votes he need not get 50% of votes he just have to get the majority so what does this mean let's say there are 100 votes in a constituency 100 votes uh, 100 votes in a constituency and there are three let's say three parties three parties So fifty percent means fifty votes, but for a person, so these hundred votes, uh, they are they have to be divided between three parties. Hundred votes are casted, and let's say one party got thirty five votes, one party got forty votes, and another party got twenty five votes. So even though the second party which got forty votes will be winning because uh, he got the majority of votes. This is called the first past the post system. That means the majority will get. So. 150% of this 100 votes is 50 is 50 but this 50 so this person who has to win need not get this 50% but to form the government 50% of mlas have to be there for a party but for a person to win in a constituency he need not get 50% of votes he just have to get the majority of votes that's it okay so this is about this and this is followed both in india and uk it is called plurality system Next, thirty-first question is on the electoral bond scheme. So, electoral bond scheme launched in Jan twenty eighteen 
may be purchased by a person citizen of india or establishment in india an individual can buy electoral bonds either singly or jointly with other individuals only political parties registered under section 29a of the rpa 1951 and which secured not less than 1% of the votes polled in the last general elections can take these bonds they are eligible to take to they are eligible to receive these bonds so these electoral bonds they are issued in denomination of rupees 1000 10000 1 lakh 10 lakhs and so on and so forth and only in authorized spa branches they will be sold okay they are valid for 15 days from the date of issue the electoral bonds shall be encashed by eligible political party only through a bank account with authorized bank so, okay so this is about the electoral bond scheme next 30 second question is on collective responsibility principle uh, if you see this collective responsibility principle uh, the minimum for so the executive branch of a parliament and its collective and uh, collectively it governs on the behalf of the parliament if a minister does not agree with the policy of the cabinet he or she must accept either accept or resign it is binding on all the ministers to pursue or agree to a policy for which there is collective responsibility so this is called collective responsibility principle because if you see the executive it is collectively responsible especially to lok sabha so it is responsible to the parliament but it is responsible to lok sabha specifically remember this also it is not responsible to rajya sabha that is the reason the no confidence can be passed only in lok sabha the no confidence can be passed only in lok sabha and the party which has the majority in lok sabha will be forming election and not rajya sabha so it will be forming government and uh, and uh, even though the opposition has a majority in rajya sabha it cannot do much only it can impact the bills let's see the 33rd question which is on the oic or uh, the organization of islamic cooperation oic oic is the second largest organization after un with a membership of 57 states from four continents africa asia europe south america it endeavors to safeguard interest of muslim world in 2019 india made its maiden appearance at oic foreign ministers meeting in the guest of honor and remember india does not have an observer status of oic india does not have the invitation to become an observer of oic for india came at 45th session of foreign ministers summit in 2018 where uh, bangladesh has hosted it okay so india is currently not an observer next 34th 34th is the interstate council so interstate council if you see it is a constitutional body interstate council set up under article 263 prime minister is the head and it was formed based on the recommendation of sarkariya commission the janata dal government headed by vp singh has set up this interstate council in 1990 the standing committee of council it consists of uh, four members the home minister as chairman four cabinet ministers and the seven chief ministers the standing committee will have a uh, continuous consultation for consideration of the council they process all matters pertaining to central state relation they monitor implementation of decisions the standing committee may invite experts as well and the council if you see it is assisted by secretariat called the interstate council secretariat set up in 1991 and headed by the secretary to the government of india since 2011 it is functioning as secretary secretariat of zonal councils as well next 35th question 35th question is on the financial bills so we have three kinds of financial bills the money bill according to article 110 the financial bill type a article 171 and financial bill type 2 according to article 1173 so these financial bills of only those financial bills are money bills which contain matters mentioned in article 110 so article 110 specifically talks about this money bill remember this and there is no provision for joint sitting of both houses in case of money bill money bill can be introduced in lok sabha and that too on the recommendation of the president it can be introduced by minister okay so and also another important thing is that the president can either accept or reject this money bill he cannot return for reconsideration remember that as well so 36th question 36th question it says uh, the uh, the list if you see in seventh schedule so we have three list the union list state list and the concurrent list the union list consists of subjects like war and peace navy air force works foreign jurisdiction citizenship aliens etc next state list state list agriculture is part of state list police prison local government the public health liquor etc they are part of state list concurrent list if you see education transfer of property other than agriculture land the trade unions they come under the concurrent list you have the residuary powers the residuary power generally lies with the central government for example the cyber cyber laws they are part of the residuary powers okay so these are the things and 42nd amendment act 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 has transferred five subjects 
from state to concurrent because on concrete on the subject of concurrent list the union government will have a say if there is a clash between the union government and the state government it is a union government that will prevail the union government's word will prevail so in 42nd amendment act the subjects like education forest weight and measures protection of wild animals and birds administration of justice they actually are now are part of the concurrent list right is it clear let's move on to the legislative council so legislative council if you see so this is a this is the second uh, second body or second house in this in the uh, state legislature in the state uh, secret in the state legislative assembly and for a council the maximum strength is 40 sorry the maximum strength is one third of the legislative assembly and uh, the minimum is 40 the minimum is 40 so legislative council strength lies between 40 and one third of legislative assembly so this is the and also if you see the members one third of the members are elected by the members of local bodies in the state like municipality district board etc 112 are elected by graduates for three uh, for graduates of three years residing within a state 112 they are elected by teachers of three years standing within the state not lower than a secondary school One third elected by members of legislative assembly of the state from amongst the persons who are not member of the assembly, and remainder are nominated by the governor from amongst persons who have special knowledge of practical experience of uh, literature, art, cooperative movement, and social service. Thus, five sixths of the total number of members of the legislative councils are directly elected, and one sixth are nominated by the governor. The members are elected by the proportional representation via the STB. The bona fides or property or the a propriety of the governor's nomination cannot be challenged in the courts. So this is about the legislative council and the thing and the rest of the composition. And thirty eighth question. This is on the speaker. So speaker, if you see, he is appointed by the president. He is among the member of the legislative. Sorry, member of the parliament. so that means he is part of the he is part of the lok sabha okay president appoints a member of the parliament as acting speaker speaker if the post of speaker or deputy speaker is vacant until the next speaker or deputy speaker is elected and there is a term called pro tem speaker generally pro tem speaker is the first speaker who is uh, or you can say let's say a new election is held so when the new election is held a person will be elected as a speaker so that he can authorize or you can say he can conduct Worth taking ceremony of all the other members. Okay, so this person is called pro tem. Generally, the the eldest person or eldest person of the house is elected is elected as the pro tem speaker. Next, white cheeked macaque, the macaca, macaca leco leucogenesis leucogenesis. The geolog geological survey of India recorded a white cheeked macaque from the central Arunachal Pradesh. It marks a new addition to the mammals of India. the white cheeks long and thick hairs on the neck area and the longer tail they are not included in the wildlife protection act of 1972 elections at state level the election commission is assisted by the chief electoral officer appointed by cec in consultation with the state government okay so this is about the elections at state level next is municipal corporation 41st question so the for municipal corporation if you see uh, they are you can say they are they are in place because of the 74th constitutional amendment act 73rd and 74th basically the 73rd talks about the gram panchayat 74th talks about the municipalities and the municipal corporations so this municipal corporations generally are created for the administration of big cities like delhi mumbai kolkata hyderabad bangalore and others and they are set up in states by acts of concerned state legislature and in utis by the act of parliament so for a municipality to be there in a state the state legislature has to pass a bill next there may be one common act or specific act for each municipal corporation a municipal corporation has three authorities namely council standing committee and commissioner the council is headed by major uh, mayor sorry not major mayor assisted by deputy mayor and the municipal commissioner if you see generally he is a civil servant he is responsible for implementation of the decisions taken by the council and the standing committees thus he is the chief executive authority of the corporation is appointed by the state government and is generally an ias next 42nd question it is on the nato so uh, la- in the last uh, in the first test we have discussed about the headquarters of nato the headquarters of nato is at 
Brussels, Belgium, Belgium, Brussels, right. So, and recently, US designated Qatar as MNNA. MNNA is major non-NATO ally. MNNA the status provided it, it provides for military and uh, some economic privileges. It does not entail any security commitment to the designated country. Next, what is the third question is on the private member. So every MP, every MP who is not a minister is a private member. Even a MP from a ruling party who is not a minister is also a private member. A member who wants to introduce bill has to give prior notice for the introduction of bill and that is one uh, before one month he has to give notice. So its drafting is responsibility of the members concerned. Okay, only the member has the responsibility for that. There. Next, 44th question is on Rajya Sabha. So Rajya Sabha, if you see it is the upper house of the upper house of the Indian parliament. The retiring member of Rajya Sabha, if you see, they are eligible for re-election and re-nomination for any number of times. This Rajya Sabha is a permanent body. One third of members retire every two years. The maximum term for a Rajya Sabha, the maximum term is six years. That means a member is elected for six years in Rajya Sabha. So this is about Rajya Sabha. Next 45th question is on Supreme Court judge. So third schedule, if you see, it provides for the oath and affirmation of the Supreme Court judges. Article 128 says that the Chief Justice of India may at time with the consent of the President request any person who has held the office of the Judge of Supreme Court or Federal Court or who has held the office of the Judge of High Court and is qualified for the appointment as the Judge of the Supreme Court to sit and act as the Judge of Supreme Court. So that is about Article 128. Next condition of office for Supreme Court. So he has to be citizen of India. Uh, he has to be citizen of India. Next he has to be Judge of a High Court for 5 years. He should be an advocate of high court for 10 years and he should be a distinguished jurist in the opinion of president and also there is no minimum age there is no minimum age for a person to be a supreme court judge the maximum age is 65 years so next 47th question this is on the smile central sector scheme the smile center Se sector scheme is uh, launched by msje the ministry of social justice and empowerment this is to provide support for the marginalized individuals for the livelihood and enterprise it is the umbrella scheme to provide welfare and rehabilitation of the transgender community community so remember this smile scheme this even you will have to write in your minds so how you will remember smile so so here s is there after s t will come s t right after s t will come so t t stands for transgender so smile is for transgender remember like that so scheme components if you see the skill development and livelihood under pm daksh the composite medical health in convergence with the PMJ supporting uh, gender reformation, surge, reformation surgery selected hospitals. The housing facility in the form of Garimagra ensuring food, clothing, recreational facilities, the skill development opportunities, recreational activities and medical support. The provision of transgender protection cell in each state under the in charge of the DG. So these are the various things about this smile scheme. Right. Now let's move on to the next question, the 48th question. So this 48th question is the PM care for children. The PM care for children, if you see, it covers all children who have lost both parents or surviving parent or legal guardian adoptive parent or single adoptive parent due to COVID-19 pandemic starting from 11-3-2020 on which WHO has declared and categorized COVID-19 as a pandemic till 28 to 2022. And the children should not be more than 18 years, should not be 18 years of age on the death of their parents. So this aim is to ensure comprehensive care and protection to the children who have lost their parents during COVID. This is to ensure that uh, they receive proper health care and treatment even though the parents are not available. This is to equip them for self-sufficiency so, and also ensure that there is no financial burden on them. It is an inter up and it provides support to these children through a convergent approach, the gap funding for ensuring education, health, monthly stipend from the age of 18 years and a lump sum of rupees 10 lakhs on attaining an age of 23 years. All these things are part of the PM cares for children who lost their parents during COVID. Next, original jurisdiction of Supreme Court, 49th question talks about this. Original jurisdiction of Supreme Court, if you see, so simply what is original jurisdiction means? It means that the Supreme Court has all the powers over these things, over these subjects and no other court has any other power. Even the High Court does not have. That is the original power. So this original jurisdiction, if you see, uh, it, it deals with the center and one or more states between two or more states. Okay. And also center and any one or more than one states on the other side. 
Supreme Court has original jurisdiction. And in these disputes, the Supreme Court has exclusive original jurisdiction. No other court can decide such disputes and original means the power to hear such disputes in the first instance, not by way of appeal. So if there is any issue on these subjects, they can directly approach the Supreme Court. Further, this jurisdiction of Supreme Court do not extend to the following like a dispute arising out of any pre-constitutional treaty, agreement or engagement or anything. A dispute arising out of any treaty or agreement etc. which provides the said jurisdiction does not extend to such dispute. The interstate water disputes, matters referred to finance commission, adjustment of uh, certain expenses between centre and states, ordinary disputes of, of commercial in nature between centre and state, recovery of damages by state against centre. And Supreme Court has original jurisdiction with respect to writs because citizen can directly go to the Supreme Court. So this is about the original jurisdiction of Supreme Court. So original jurisdiction is, is uh, there with the Supreme Court with regarding the various, uh, <coughs> sorry, with regarding these uh, disputes between center and more than one state or single state between two or more states. And also this original jurisdiction is not applicable to interstate river water disputes, matters referred by the finance commission, the adjustment of finances and expenses between center and state, commercial disputes, the recovery of damages and <coughs> others. And also another thing is that the art in article 32, the citizens have the right to approach the Supreme Court if their fundamental rights are violated, if their fundamental rights are violated. Next question, the 50th question is with regarding fundamental duties. The fundamental duties are part, are part of article 51A. There are 11 fundamental duties. They are inserted into the constitution by 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976. They are, they are uh, inserted into the constitution on the recommendation of Sardar Swaran Singh Committee. And there were 10 duties initially. Le later 11th duty was added by the 86th Constitutional Amendment Act in 2002. These duties, if you see, they are not enforceable by any law. But a court may refer to them while adjudicating a matter. That is the importance of these duties, right? So these are the questions, 25 questions for the day. Tomorrow, we will see from question number 51 to 75. Till then, keep studying and stay tuned. Jai Hind.